There are few sterner tests of the strength of a country and its institutions than a breakaway region. There is almost no way for the nation being broken away from to look good. The very fact of a breakaway region causes the rest of the world to wonder what is so dreadful about a given country that anyone wants to break away from it, and as a matter of internal politics, it presents a choice between managing the breakup or going to war to stop it. Added to which, sometimes breakaway movements are just silly and self-indulgent, a means of gratifying ambitious politicians and or melodramatic nationalists lucky enough to live in places where the colours on the flag flying over them actually rank as a pressing concern. Not everyone who is aggrieved is right. Where Somaliland is concerned, it is difficult to begrudge its decision back in 1991 to secede from Somalia and set up shop on its own. Somalia was then, and has frequently been since, dysfunctional and dangerous. Somaliland has done pretty well, all things considered. It is largely peaceful and orderly, holds free-ish and fair-ish elections, and makes some kind of living exporting livestock, though remittances sent back home by its diaspora are estimated to be a hefty whack of Somaliland's GDP. So I feel my ownership of my right, right freedom, right to choose uh, the, 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 the president that I like. So Somalian independence has a similar value with the air that we are breathing. Not one other country has done Somaliland the courtesy of formal recognition, least of all Somalia, which still regards Somaliland as very much part of it. But the two are now talking to each other in circumstances which look very much like an international summit rather than an internal dialogue. First and foremost, let me say that it's a great pleasure to be here with you today and to participate the continuation of the dialogue between Somaliland and Somalia. Somaliland President and former rebel commander Musa Bihi and Somalia President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, better known as Farmajo, have been meeting this week in Djibouti. Chairing these talks, reasonably enough, has been Djibouti's president, Ismail Omar Gouele, but the more significant attendee might be Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who won the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to reconcile Ethiopia with its former breakaway region of Eritrea, and who hosted an informal meeting between Bihi and Farmajo in Addis Ababa in February. Somaliland's agenda here is not difficult to discern. Somaliland wants Somalia, and everyone else, to recognise its sovereignty and sees right now as being as propitious a moment as any. In the next few weeks, Somalia and Somaliland will celebrate the 60th anniversary of the end of colonial rule. Modern Somalia was founded on July 1st, 1960 by uniting the territories which had once comprised the former Italian colony of Somalia with what had been British Somaliland. Indeed, for a five-day interregnum between emerging from British rule and joining Somalia, Somaliland was briefly an independent state. It wishes to be again. We conducted a constitutional referendum in which 97% of Somalilanders voted to support the constitution and the independence. Republic of Somaliland has created a conducive environment that enabled a thriving private sector and an inflow of international investment. Somaliland has played an important role in the peace and security of the region and has been a reliable partner in the fight against the terrorism, piracy, human trafficking, money laundering and other forms of organized crimes. Unfortunately, instead of appreciating all those efforts and contributions made by the Somaliland people for the last 30 years, Somalia was in a constant war against the development of Somaliland. 
It's a little harder to tell what mileage Somalia perceives in these talks. Its official position has not changed. It regards Somaliland as part of Somalia. Some opposition figures in Mogadishu have suggested that President Farmajo is somehow hoping that cutting a statesman like Dash will accrue him enough political capital to delay Somalia's 2020 election, which, if it happens, would be Somalia's first proper election for just over half a century, a fact which kind of reminds why Somaliland wanted out in the first place. It is noticeable that the talks between Somalia and Somaliland have been warmly welcomed by an international community which is normally pretty cagey about encouraging secessionists. The United Nations and the United States have endorsed the talks, both possibly hoping, after several bruising and occasionally bloody decades of engagement with Somalia, that resolving disputes through negotiation might be a habit that catches on. In regard to Somalia-Somaliland relations, we are encouraged that dialogue is ongoing at senior levels and that both sides have indicated a willingness to maintain communication and pursue further discussions. Other onlookers have economic interests, notably the United Arab Emirates, which has invested heavily in Somaliland, which sits on 850 kilometers of Gulf of Aden coastline. Discussions appear to have been broadly amicable, if nevertheless tense, what diplomats would describe as constructive, and mercifully not, at the risk of tempting fate, full and frank. There was a minor kerfuffle at one point when Djibouti issued a joint communique which carelessly referred to Somaliland as a country. After an amount of harumphing from the Somali delegation, the inflammatory phrase was deleted. Somaliland does have a case for being so described, however. Its credentials as a sovereign state are at least as solid as those of near neighbours Eritrea, which became formally independent in 1993, and South Sudan, which took its seat at the UN in 2011. Somaliland won't get what it really wants out of these talks, but it will get to look like other players on the world stage take it seriously, and might get Somalia used to the idea of addressing it as a separate equal. And that will do Somaliland's cause no harm at all. For Monocle24, I'm Andrew Miller.